Now that we've looked at Lightroom's interface overall, let's have a look at how you actually bring in photos and edit photos into Lightroom. So, like I mentioned, it's a bit different than Photoshop in how it manages the files you work with and you well, you can open files directly, you can drag and drop a file into uh, Lightroom and it's going to open, but it's still going to go through the same process. So basically, Lightroom works with a library of photos. So uh, it has your photos always inside the application so you can manage them, you can see them. And if you want you can choose which one to also edit and to have the photos accessible in Lightroom to bring them into your library you need to import them um, so while you're in the library area here you have the first tab activated um, by default all of this will be empty so you can go about bringing images into fo into Lightroom in several ways. The more straightforward one is just to go into the left panel here and at the bottom you see you have two buttons, import and export. So import is the one you want to go to and you get this new screen. Uh, and on the left, you get to choose your source. So where do you want to bring uh, images in from? When you connect a camera, for example, to your computer and you have Lightroom started, by default, this will be brought up automatically. So Photoshop assumes, Lightroom assumes that when you connect your camera, you want to bring in the images that you have on your camera, on your car. If you've already copied or have the files from somewhere else on your system, you can go browse to them here. I'm just going to choose a folder randomly. And it shows you all of the photos in the folder. And you get to check which ones you want to import or not. You can check all or uncheck all down here you can change right next to the check all button you have two other buttons that change the view so you can see the photos bigger especially if you have like from an event hundreds of photos and uh, you have like burst shoots and out of 10 photos that look almost identical you only want to keep the best one you might want to look at them more closer um, so you can do this and you can zoom in overall so you have the thumbnails slider here in the lower right corner and you can make these bigger and smaller depending first of all of how many images you have you can so it, it, Lightroom will also just bring in the new photos that you put into a folder so these I haven't imported any of these into Lightroom yet um, so it checks them on all by default, but uh, there might be situations where you just add some photos to a folder and want to bring those in and then only those photos that are not already added will be, um, will be selected. You have a few options at the top here as well. You can by default just add the photos to the catalog to your library and they stay where they are and they're processed as usual uh, also by default Lightroom doesn't really change anything with the files when you edit them so it doesn't matter that much but you can also copy them to somewhere and then you get on this right side the option to choose where or you can move them somewhere or you can copy them as DNG which means they get converted to that format we've talked about before in which Adobe is trying to um, introduce a more uniform format for raw files. But that DNG format, that's digital negative, is what it's meant to, uh, to stand for. Uh, that DNG format doesn't only work with uh, 
raw files it works with jpegs as well but then they get treated like raw files even though the information uh, inside them is still the same by default you'll probably just want to add and then you can choose some other uh, some other options here on the on the right hand side you can choose to build previews as you open the files which will generate a um, lighter weight version of your image so you can work more quickly um, if you do this uh, well, it, previews will be built by default, but you can choose which kind of previews. One to one is the biggest one, uh, and these all get built when you import. So if you import like hundreds of photos at one time, it's gonna take a long time. So you might go with minimal, and then when you actually access a photo to edit it, you'll get a higher quality preview generated. Just then, you can build smart previews, which will be smaller uh but they adapt to what you're doing it's well if you really uh, have issues with performance especially you might want to check out what all of these kinds of previews do i i am gonna let uh, lightroom build smart previews don't import suspected duplicates this is also useful if you shoot raw and jpeg so there are cameras that can take the same photo and save it both as a raw file and as a jpeg file so you have the jpeg for quick sharing and viewing and you have the raw file so you keep all of that powerful editing available um, if you have copy here you can make several copies you can automatically add to a collection we're not doing that yet but i'll show you what those are and you can even do some automated editing with uh just when you import so you can apply presets basically if you have uh some issues with your camera which then always brings in photos or takes photos that are too desaturated for example or that have color fringes in the corners or stuff like that you might want to apply a preset from the very beginning um, to everything that you import and you can also add metadata so information about your photos you can save presets or you can put in keywords here so uh, I don't know stuff like uh, press photos uh, portraits but not all of these are portraits so I am going to choose just these um, and do it to do just this import and these are automatically these words are then automatically associated with your photos and it makes it easier to search for them and to find them uh, if you have a lot of photos, again, you might want to be able to sort them. So down here you have the ability to sort them by their name, by, by their type. So separate draw from JPEG, for example, by media type. If you also have video, Lightroom can do a bit of uh, editing, well, color correction and stuff on video, not actual editing. Uh, but it's very slow you can try it out but i don't particularly recommend it i guess uh, unless you have a very good computer um and well whether they're checked or not so you can have all kinds of sorting options here um and you can save all of these in a preset and use it over and over again if you want to use the same thing um okay and i'm just gonna click import and you'll see the images show up here uh, that's it just shows me my latest import in the library and uh, the same images here in the timeline in, in the film strip actually you can choose what you see here but by default this is what you get the last import um, 